ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلْ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. Before I begin the khutbah, if your cell phone is out, put it away. Because you have just lost or diminished from your khutbah. An Ibn Umar An Umar ibn al Khattab, radiallahu anhu, qal. إني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن خير إن خير التابعين رجل يقال له أويس وله والدة وكان ب وكان به بياض فمروه فليستغفر لكم عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه يسد I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say the best amongst the tabi'een the successors those who came after the sahaba would be a person whose name would be called Uwais. And he would have his mother living with him. And he would have sign, a sign of leprosy on his skin. If you find him, ask Allah, ask him to seek forgiveness for you from Allah. This was told to the companions of them, Umar ibn Khattab who was promised Jannah. But to go and find this tabi'i, a man who did not meet the Prophet wasallam. So he didn't get the title of Sahabi, of companion. Usair ibn Jabir, he narrated that the, when people came from Yemen for reinforcement to Umar, he asked them, is there amongst you a man named Uwais? And he kept looking till he found him. And he said, are you Uwais? Al-Qarn, from the Qarn area of Yemen, from the tribe of Murad. He said, yes. Do you have your mother living with you? He said, yes. Do you have a sign of leprosy on your skin? He said, yes. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, saying to find you and ask you to ask forgiveness from Allah for us. He was dutiful to his mother. When he took an oath, in the sake of Allah, he would fulfill his oath. And this, because of his duty, his love, his companionship to his mother. Some saying that she was elderly and pious because he worked hard as a herdsman to make money so he could support her. This elevated him in status even though he was not a companion. To the level where the companions were directed if they met him, to have him make dua to Allah for them to be forgiven. My dear brothers and sisters in, ta- in, in Islam, all the time we mention the parents, but how often do we really focus on just that topic? And in this day and age, nowadays we have to focus on this topic over and over again as a reminder. So we will do that today with ayat. And with a hadith, and with from examples from, from examples from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum wa rabbahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبْرَ أَحَدَهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تُقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْبٍ وَلَا تَنْحَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا 
واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمه وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا الله سبحانه وتعالى he says what means and your lord has decreed that you worship none but him again we see that Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam always began with tawhid that Allah is the only one we should worship and we should not associate partners in worship with him and that shirk was the largest of sins and then he said and that you be dutiful to your parents if any of them or both of them attain old age in your life do not say a word or a sound of disrespect do not raise your voices at them or shout at them but address them in terms of honor and lower unto them the wing of submission and humility through mercy and say my lord make the dua my lord bestow on them mercy because they brought me up when i was young this is your task in your life young and old to serve your parents as they served you when you were a child whatever good you do it will never equal what they have done for you allah says wa wasayna al insana bi walidayhi hamalatuhu ummuhu wahnan ala wahn وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ أَنْ أَشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرِ Allah says in Surah Al-Luqman, what means that we have enjoined on mankind, males and females, to be dutiful to their parents and good to their parents, respectful to their parents, obedient to their parents. His mother bore him in weakness and hardship upon weakness and hardship, and his weaning is in two years, so give thanks to me and to your parents, and to me is the final destination. We will understand this in a couple more minutes. A man he came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said man ahqqu bi husni sahabati who is the most deserving of my companionship companionship fa qala lahu ummu he said to him your mother then he said thum yani thum man who after my mother he said ummu ka a second time then he was asked again who after your mother thum man he said ummu ka a third time he said who after her this third time he said abuk thum adnak adnak then your father then those closest in relative in relation to you from your kith and your kin the mother was elevated to be given this companionship three times to the father because of her love her tenderness for her children the struggle she did the suffer during pregnancy carrying you in her womb giving birth to you breastfeeding you and feeding you sitting up at night when you would toss and turn or be sick or the likes of those matters She was given that companionship three times to the father. In a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, we see the Prophet that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Inna Allah harrama alaykum aqoqul ummahat." He said sallallahu alaihi wasallam that indeed Allah has forbidden you to be disobedient, disobedient and disrespectful to the parents, to the mothers. Afwan, specifically here the mothers. Allah has forbidden you disobedience to your mothers. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in another authentic hadith ala unabbiukum bi akbar al kaba'ir shall i not inform you to what is the greatest of sins qalu bala ya rasulullah he said of, they said of course tell us o messenger of allah fa qala al ishraq billah wa uquq al walidain he is he said that is you commit shirk is the largest of sins because we know in allah la yaghfir an yashraka bihi that Allah will not forgive the sin of shirk unless you sincerely repent for it. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Any other sin, Allah may forgive you for it even if you did not seek His forgiveness. But not shirk. What did He combine with this? عُقُوقُ الْوَالِدَيْنِ Disobedience, disrespect to the parents. He was laying down at the time to complete the hadith. So He sat, sat up, جَلَسَ وَقَالَ أَلَا وَقَوْلِ الزُّورِ وَشَهَادَةِ الزُّورِ أَلَا وَقَوْلِ الزُّورِ وَشَهَادَةِ الزُّورِ He sat up and said, and bearing false testimony and false witness and bearing false testimony and false witness this bir towards the parents this goodness it's the opposite of aquq of disobedience qala rasulullah al bir husn al khuluq sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said bir is good conduct good character good manners wa qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna ma ta'atu fil ma'ruf that obedience is only in what is good So whenever the parents command you to do anything you must listen to them unless it is disobedience to Allah. If you're past the age of puberty and they tell you don't fast and it's a day of Ramadan and you have no valid excuse. You're not traveling, you're not very sick, etc. that you don't listen and no sin upon you. But other than that the parents should be listened to with whatever they command you with. According to Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu he said there are three things mentioned in the Quran that cannot be separated. You take them both or you leave. These three things you can't have one or the other. 
He said, Allah wa ati'ur Rasul. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can't split the two. You take both or you don't have them. Till today, on a weekly basis, I'm asked that I have somebody, I know somebody who accepts the Quran, but they're not accepting the Sunnah, the Ahadith, wal Ayat Billah. How many ayat? How many ayat do we have that mention? وَمَنْ يُتْعَ الرَّسُولُ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهُ Whoever obeys the Messenger وسلم, has obeyed Allah. An ayah after ayah, hadith after a hadith, showing that you must follow the sunnah if you are obeying Allah. If you want Allah to forgive you, you must follow the sunnah. But we're having people enter into these foolish thoughts and debates for no reason, just pulling them away from the deen. You cannot separate obey Allah and obey His Messenger You cannot separate aqim as-salah wa at zakat Paying the salah and giving the zakat. You can't pray and not pay the zakat. You're not give the, you cannot give the zakat and not pray. These two go hand in hand. You can't do one and not the other. And the third one, and أَشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ And to give thanks to me and to your parents. These two cannot be separated. Then Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma he said, whoever thanked Allah, but he was not appreciative and thankful to his parents, then Allah will not accept his thanking him. Allah will not accept you thanking Him if you do not thank and appreciate the parents that He gave you, that brought you up. Even if they be disbelievers. This is why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, رِضَ الْرَبْ فِي رِضَ الْوَالِدْ وَصَخَطُ الْرَبْ فِي صَخَطِ الْوَالِدْ That Allah's pleasure, your Lord's pleasure is tied to your parents' pleasure with you. And Allah's anger is tied to your parents' anger with you. So if you want to please Allah, if you want to have Allah love you and forgive you, then you must be good to your parents and have them on good terms with you, brothers, if you can move forward, fill in all the gaps in both the social hall and the main hall and the sisters' hall. <clears throat> Please move forward, barakallahu feekum. Being good to the parents, being kind and dutiful, this is ibadah, this is an act of worship. According to Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, he said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ الْوَالِدُ أَوْسَتَ بُوَابَ الْجَنَّةِ الْوَالِدُ the parents are the best in the middle door of the eight gates of Jannah. So if you want, lose entering Jannah from this gate. Or if you want, preserve that you will enter Jannah with this gate. Preserve it. They are the best in the middle door of the doors of Jannah. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَفْضَلُ الْأَعْمَالِ أو الْعَمَلِ الصلاة لوقتها وبر الوالدين رواه مسلم عبد الله narrated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said the best of deeds the best of actions that you can do is observance of the prayer at its proper time and being kind and dutiful to your parents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he stated that he will accept the good deeds, the righteous acts of the one who is good to their parents and dutiful to their parents, who serves their parents, who is patient with their parents. And he said, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ نَتَقَبَّلْ عَنْهُمْ أَحْسَنَ مَا عَمِلُوا وَنَتَجَاوَزُ عَنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ In Surah Al-Ahqaf, Allah says what means they are those from whom we will accept the best of their deeds and overlook their evil deeds. That Allah will accept your good deeds, forgive you for your sins, just because of bin al-walidin, just because you're good, kind, dutiful to your parents and you don't show them disrespect. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ مِنْ أَبَرِّ الْبِرِّ أَنْ يَصِلُ الرَّجُلْ أَهْلَ وُدِّ أَبِيهِ بَعْدَ أَنْ يُوَلِّي رواه مسلم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said from the most dutiful acts that you can do to keep in, 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 for your father, is to keep in contact with his close friends after he has passed away. So this being good to your parents, dutiful to your parents, it doesn't mean just when they're alive. Even after their death, there's things that we will see we can do. And from that towards the father, is that you would keep in touch with his close friends and be in good contact with them. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, رَغِمَ أَنْفُهُ رَغِمَ أَنْفُهُ رَغِمَ أَنْفُهُ مَنْ أَدْرَكَ أَبَوَيْهِ عِنْدَ الْكِبْرَ أَحَدَهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَمْ يَدْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ رَوَاهُ مُسْلِمٌ Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made a dua against the person we're going to mention. He said, may he be disgraced and humiliated, may he be disgraced and humiliated, may he be disgraced and humiliated. The one who finds one or both of his parents 
alive in his lifetime and he is able to serve them and because of that, not serving them, he does not enter Jannah. May this person be disgraced. May they be humiliated. The parents are a key for you to enter Jannah, to earn Allah's forgiveness, to earn his mercy, to him accept your good deeds, to admit you into the, the gardens of paradise forever and ever. All through this fa'a to the parents. عن أبي بر عن أبي عن أبي بردة أنه شاهد ابن عمر رضي الله عنه ورجل يمان يطوف بالبيت حم حمل أمه وراء ظهره أبو بردة he narrated ابن عمر رضي الله عنه he was watching a Yemeni man <coughs> circling the Kaaba while carrying his mother on his back saying I am like her humble camel and he was making tawaf with her and this is an easy Sometimes on your own feet, let alone with now some added weight. So he was carrying his mother on his back, making tawaf around the Kaaba seven times. فَقَالَ يَبْنُ عُمَرْ أَتَرَانِي جَزَيْتُهَا Oh, Ibn Umar, did I pay her back? He said, وَلَا بِزَفْرَةٍ wahida. He said, you have not even paid her back for one pain, one constriction, one contraction, one kick that you gave her when she was giving birth to you. During the pangs of pregnancy, not even one. Not even one. For all of this action, in another narration it says, وَلَكِنْ قَدْ أَحْسَنْتَ وَاللَّهُ يُثِيبُكَ عَلَى الْقَلِيلِ كثيرة. He said, rather, but you're still doing good. And Allah can still reward you greatly for this little thing you've done. Imagine if one of us carried our mother on, the, on our backs during tawaf. We would think we did the world for her, that we paid her for what she's done for us. This does not even equal a pain, a contraction, a contraction, عفواً, <clears throat> any difficulty she experienced during her pregnancy with you. It was narrated from uh, uh, a companion. Jahima, jaa ila nabihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqal, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aradtu an aghzua, wa qad jiktu astashiruka. فَقَالَ هَلْ لَكَ مِنْ أُمٍ قَالَ نَعَمْ قَالَ فَأَلْزَمُهَا فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ تَحْتْ رِجْلَيْهَا This hadith which is sahih in the sunnah of al-Nasai. We have another one mentioned the same thing. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ تَحْتْ أَقْدَامَهَا That Jannah belies beneath her feet. This man, he came to the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, O Messenger of Allah, I want to go out and fight in the cause of Allah. And I have come to ask your advice. He said, do you have a mother? He said, yes. He said, then stay with her, serve her, be dutiful to her, because paradise lies under her feet. We know the call for jihad, when it is legislated. But even here, the Prophet ﷺ said, stick with your mother and serve her. Because this is a battle and a struggle in and of itself. There was a man who had committed a major sin, and he came to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, and told him of that major sin and wanted repentance for it, how he should repent for it. He said, is your mother alive? The man said, no. So he said, repent to Allah Almighty, so that you may draw near to Him as much as you can, or try to draw near to Him as much as you can. <clears throat> so Apa, he said, I went to him and I asked Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, why did you ask him if his mother was alive? Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, فَقَالَ إِنِّي لَا أَعْلَمُ عَمَلًا أَقْرَبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مِنْ بِرِّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ He asked this man after he committed a major sin if his mother was alive for the reason of, I do not know any good deed or anything that is closer to Allah and closer to Allah's pleasure and forgiveness and mercy than being dutiful to the mother. Than being dutiful to بِرِّ الْوَالِدَ عَفْوًا بِرِّ الْوَالِدَ Being dutiful to the mother. And Shaykh Al-Albani for Imam al-Bukhari and this hadith is sahih. Taysal ibn Mayyas in a hadith, he said that Ibn Umar, he mentioned radiallahu anhu, nine major sins. The last of them he mentioned, and we mentioned it a few weeks ago. But for the greater good, we remind ourselves because reminding benefits the believers, may Allah make us from them. He said, وَبُكَاءُ الْوَالِدَيْنِ مِنَ الْعُقُوقِ قَالَ لِي ابْنُ Umar. أَتَفْرَقُ أَتَفْرَقُ النَّارِ وَتُحُبُّ أَن تَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ قُلْتُ أَيُّ وَاللَّهِ قَالَ أَحَيُّ وَالِدُكَ قُلْتُ عِنْدِي أُمِّي قَالَ فَوَاللَّهِ لَوْ أَلَنْتَ لَهَا الْكَلَامِ وَأَطْعَمْتَهَا الطَّعَامِ 
لدخل لتدخلن الجنة ما اجتنبت ما اجتنبت الكبائر. This hadith which Sheikh Al-Albani he also graded as Sahih, also in Alad Abdul Mufrad from Imam Al-Bukhari. The last of those nine major sins Ibn Umar he mentioned to this man. He said, it is to cause the parents, either one, the mother and the father, to weep from your disobedience. To cry from your disobedience. Ya Allah, how many times someone, some of the children in, our, in their lives, not just the young, us on our older age when we can reflect ourselves, caused our parents to cry, caused them to weep, caused them to scream, caused them to get angry, caused them to lose sleep just because of our disobedience to them. How many times because we didn't want to listen to them, because we favored our wife or our children, our friends, our desires over them. How many times did we cause the mother to shed tears? Not because we were sick, but because we disrespected her. Or for the father to shed tears, this is happening nowadays. Fathers crying, crying, crying in front of my face because of the disobedience of their children. Not because the father is preventing them from going to hajj or something. No, because it's preventing him from doing, following his desires and fulfilling his desires. So he said, by Allah, he said, do you want to separate yourself from the fire and enter Jannah? He said, Wallahi, I do. I want to enter Jannah and stay away from the fire. He said, are your parents still alive? He said, my mother is. He said, by Allah, if you speak gently to your mother and you feed your mother, then you will enter paradise as long as you avoid the major sins. It was narrated from Salim ibn Abdullah that his father said قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثة لا ينظر الله عليهم يوم عز وجل لا ينظر لا ينظر الله عز وجل إليهم يوم القيامة العاق لوالديه والمرأة المترجلة والديوث وثلاثة لا يدخلون الجنة العاق لوالديه والمدمن على الخمر والمنان بما أعطى this hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah of the Nasa'i, the Messenger of Allah said there are three people Allah will not look at at the Day of Judgment because of his disgust with them. He will not look at them. Just because of what they did in this hadith, he won't even want to look at their faces. He will not look at them on the Day of Resurrection. The first one, the one who is disobedient to his or her parents. The one who disrespects them doesn't listen to them, doesn't follow what they ask. The man, the woman who imitates the man in outward appearance, and the opposite is true. And even though this isn't the topic for today, we must warn each other about this. Because now you go to purchase a coffee, and a guy will be giving it to a man. He's a man. And he'll be giving it to you, and he has nail polish on his nails, and earrings, and the likes of these matters. And you'll go and you'll see a female handing you something and you can't tell whether she's a male or a female because of her haircut and her dress and her style. This person Allah will not want to look at on the day of resurrection. And the youth, the one, the man who has no ghira, no shame for how his women act, his mothers, his sisters, his daughters, his wives, no shame how they act, how they leave the home, how they interact with men freely, dancing with them, and this, it doesn't bother them. At the very least, you should hate it and do what you can to avoid it. And then the second part of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, and there are three who will not enter paradise. The one who disobeys his parents, it was said they will not enter Jannah. The one who is the drunkard. This isn't, as we just mentioned a few weeks ago, it's not just the alcohol. Any drug, weed counts. The one who is intoxicated with this or constantly uses those drugs and alcohol, this person, it said, they will not enter Jannah, and the one who reminds people of the favors or the things he has given them, this person will not enter Jannah according to this hadith. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, being good to the parents is a debt we owe them that we will never be able to pay back, but we must try and exert ourselves in it if we want Allah to forgive us and have mercy on us and accept our good deeds and forgive us for our sins and admit us into Jannah. 
May Allah make us of those who are respectful and obedient to their parents. Brothers, still move forward if you can. Get tight. We'll figure out the lines for salah at that time in both halls. Barakallahu feekum. Please move forward, especially if you're in the entryway. There's a lot of spaces if you get tight together. Barakallahu feekum. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this topic of being dutiful to the parents is not just for the youth; it's for all of us, and we need to pay attention to it, young and old. Kindness and obedience to the parents. We see it stress in Islam, but we see it being less stress, less important in the society we're in today. We see respect and kindness for the parents lacking, not being the top priority. In this age, we see children talking back to their parents. We see them leaving their home and never coming back to their parents, never calling their parents, never checking on their parents, never wanting or caring to support their parents. How many kids talk back to their parents? How many kids, or at, when you were kids, if you're old enough, curse their parents, lift a hand at their parents, actually hit their parents, insult their parents, call their parents names, call them evil names. They get a call from their parent. They look at it and they put it back in their pocket. They get a call from a friend. They answer it right away. This hypocrisy Allah sees, even if nobody else sees it. This sin you are doing is not worth your akhirah. As we will continue to see. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we said the hadith earlier, رِضَ الرَّبْ فِي رِضَ الْوَالِدْ وَسَقْطَ الرَّبْ فِي سَقْطِ الْوَالِدْ Allah's pleasure with you is tied to your parents' pleasure with you. And His anger with you is tied to your parents' anger with you. Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, no son can repay the kindness shown by his father unless he were to find a slave, buy him and emancipate him, free him. This isn't just about the mother. It's about the father as well and then the, both parents in many of those instances. Here in the West, we're seeing where parents just want to be abandoned. They're too much of a burden. You throw them in a nursing home, never visiting them or rarely visiting them, not calling upon them, not checking upon them. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, fear Allah with respect to them. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, radiallahu anhu, he said, do not befriend someone who is not good to their parents. A person who you hear yelling at their parents, cursing their parents, not respecting their parents, do not take this person as a friend. Because he continued to say, how can this person be a good friend to you when they're unkind to their parents? <clears throat> Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he said, being good to your parents is a kafara, it's an expiation min kaba'ir for the, for the major sins. An expiation for the major sins. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said in authentic hadith that he entered Jannah. فَسَمِعْتُ صَوْتًا قَارِئًا قَارِئًا فَقُلْتُ مَنْ هَذَا قَالُوا حَارَثَ بِنْ النُّعْمَانِ فَقَالَ النَّبِيهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَذَلِكَ الْبِرْ كَذَلِكَ الْبِرْ وَكَانَ أَبَرَّ النَّاسِ بِأُمِّهِ the Prophet ﷺ, when he entered Jannah, he heard the most beautiful sound that he could hear. And he said, who is this or what is this sound? What is this recitation? They said, it is Harith ibn al-Nu'man. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, this is the result of his kindness. This is the result of his kindness. He was the most kindness of the people to his mother. So he's given this honor in Jannah because of his dutifulness to his mother. Muhammad ibn Sirin, he said during the Khalifa of Uthman ibn Affan, the price of a palm tree was 1,000 dirham. That's a lot of money. At that time, a lot of money. 1,000 dirham for a palm tree. Osama bin Zayd, may Allah be pleased with him, he headed for one of those palm trees and he cut it off. He bought it and cut it off. And he gave the core and fed it to his mother. The people said to him, what is wrong with you? You went and you bought a thousand dollar tree just to cut it, to feed the core, which is worth like two dirham. And the whole tree is a thousand dirham. He said, my mother asked me to bring it to her. And I would always bring her anything she asked of me as long as I could do so. 
Nowadays, if our mother asks us for things or our father asks us for things, we're like, okay, let me see if I can do it. And we look, and we look at our bills, and all of them are dunya-based. My car, my house, my this, my that, my vacation, all these expenses. And so we tell them, I can't afford it. When you can afford the foolishness you do. Look at what they used to do. Take something that's a thousand dollars, cut it down to give your mom that something worth two dollars just because she wanted it. And because she liked it. This is bin. This is goodness to the parents. And when we mention, do not say oof. This goes with oof. Ah, what? Gosh. They all count. I don't care if you think that it's not disrespect, it's disrespect. Because Islam says it's disrespect. So don't say when you raise your voice to your mother or your father, that's not disrespect. It's disrespect. Whether you like it or not. It was narrated from Al Bukhari that Sa'ad Sa ibn Ubadah that his mother had died when he was absent. He said, she died when I was absent. She was, he was telling the Prophet she died when I was absent, O Messenger of Allah. Can I give charity on her behalf for her to benefit from it in her grave? And he said, yes. And he said, I ask you to bear witness that I give my whole garden that bears fruit in charity on her behalf. So me, she may get the reward. So she may get the reward. Sacrificing dunya pleasures for the sake of benefiting your parents even after they die. You can still honor them and respect them by giving charity in their name. By spreading knowledge, authentic knowledge in their name. And by being waladun salih and yad'ulah, by being a righteous child who makes dua for him and her. I want to end and I'll just read it in English from Kitab al-Kibar, the book of major sins. From Imam al-Dhahabi, <coughs> where he compiles some 70 major sins. And I'll just read what he wrote as one description describing this. He said, I warn you, O you who withhold the most confirmed rights, which is to be dutiful to your parents, but you're disobedient to them, and who forget what is obligatory, forget what is obligatory for you, and neglect what is in front of you. You owe your parents a debt. You claim to seek the Jannah, to seek paradise. Yet it is under the feet of your mother. She bore you in her womb for nine months. And it is like she made hajj for nine months. She suffered in childbirth. What melts the heart. She nursed you from her own body to give you milk. She rushed from sleep for your sake. And sacrificed her sleep. And washed the dirt off your body and the filth off your body with her hands. She preferred you to herself when there was food, even though she went hungry. And she made her lap a cradle for you to sleep and rest on, wouldn't even move if it was hurting her body, just so you wouldn't wake up. If an illness or complaint afflicted you, she was greatly upset. And her sadness and her weeping would last long. She spent her money on doctors or on other things for you to have. If she had been given a choice between your life and hers, she would have chosen your life. She did all of this and yet you treat her badly time and time again. She prayed for you to have success secretly when you didn't even know she was up praying for you and openly. But then when she needs you in old age, she's the least of important things to you. You've made her the lowest of the people in your life. You are full in your stomach, and she is hungry. You are quenched, and she is thirsty. Your wife and your children treat her well, but you treat her with neglect. And many times you favor your wife, and you favor your children, and you favor all these others above her. <clears throat> her orders vex you even when they are slight. You get annoyed by them even when she asks you to do something little. It annoys you. Because it's distracting you from following your desires. Her life seems long to you, although it is short. This is despite the fact that your Lord has forbidden you to say uff or ugh or anything like that and warned you that you risk being punished in this world 
through the disobedience of your own children and in the next world by distance from the Lord of the worlds. He calls you with rebuke and threat. This is on account of what you did. Allah does not wrong his slaves. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I had skipped over it, but for its benefit, just a few seconds to hear it. We know the hadith of the three men who got trapped in a cave. They were trapped in a cave. And a boulder had fallen on its opening, so they said, let us call upon Allah by our good actions. So that Allah may move this stone away and free us from this cave and being trapped. So the first man, he said, oh Allah, I had my job and my family and my parents were living with me. And every day I would go out and I would milk some of the animals and bring it back and feed my parents first and then my children. So he said, one day I came back and they were asleep. So I stood at the edge of their bed, my children crying at my feet in hunger. And I refused to feed my children or my wife or anyone in the house till my parents awoke and took the first sips. Where is the Rilwari Deng? Because of this, the rock moved, showing you Allah accepted this good deed. Our parents, they're higher than our wives, they're higher than our children. Children, fear Allah with respect to how you disobey your parents, how you do not honor them, how you do not take care of them. Everything you spend on them is worth it, and they deserve it. And we will never, ever, ever, ever be able to pay them back for anything they've done for us. Not even half, not even a fourth of the way, not even a tenth of the way. So be mindful of this, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Make it a priority, you youth, whose parents are still alive, maybe not old still, do not disobey your parents. Do not disrespect your parents. They have lived longer, seen evil things, want the best for you. And they struggled so many times, days, years, that you will never even notice. Yet your actions cause them to cry Many times not in front of your face. Fear Allah with respect to this. This could be a source of Allah saying, I don't want to look at you on the day of resurrection. And you ain't going to my Jannah. Fear Allah and let bir al-walidayn, the goodness to the parents, be of the utmost priorities that we have in our lives. Allahumma khil al-muslimin wal-muslimat. Al-mu'minin wal-mu'minat. Al-ahyayin minhum wal-amwat. Inaka anta sami'un qalim al-mujib al-da'wat. يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر وارحم اباءنا وامهاتنا يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر اللهم مر اللهم اشف مر مر اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين نسال الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم ان يشفيهم يا ارحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين الله اكبر الله اكبر